We are very lucky in our shop today to have Randy Johnson here, and we're lucky despite Randy Johnson being here, but uh, Randy Johnson is with ShopBot, and he's here to provide us some tips on programming for CNC and workflow for CNC, how to get from kind of the drawing board in your head to where we're actually cutting wood. And uh, Randy, you ready to start us out on your laptop I there am, George. and give us an overview? I will. So as you mentioned, there's a workflow to it that most woodworkers aren't real familiar with, and it boils down to three things. One is the CAD, which is the drawing part, which most woodworkers are familiar with, and the back end is the cutting, and in between there's something called CAM, which is the tool path of the program. I'm gonna walk you through uh, those three steps today, George. And one of the things to point out is that this is really generic to CNC work in general, not ChatBot specific. Absolutely. The, the, this, the software is real similar from machine to machine, so this is gonna help you out no matter which machine you're on. Yeah, there's several different types of software out there as well. The one that I use is a pretty common one, and has some pretty neat built-in tools. I'm gonna to show you a couple of those today as well, George. All right. So it all starts out by doing a job setup, which is where you select the size of the board. You can set it whatever size you want based on the size of your machine, the thickness of the board, and there are a couple other settings here also that you set up. You simply click OK, and now this white area represents the size of our board, which is six by eight inches. From here, one of the neat things about working on CAD and with uh, CNC, you can take a simple drawing. In this case, I already have a piece of clip art already loaded up. This football, it's a piece of free clip art that I downloaded off the internet. And then there is a tracing tool over in the drawing side. And it has some options. I select the piece of clip art. And then I do what's called a preview, and you'll notice that we get some lines popping around the edge. Those are vector lines, and those are the lines that are going to be used for doing the tool pathing or the cutting. So tracing is literally tracing. It just defined the outside of each of those clip art lines, which eventually become a tool path? Correct, okay. correct. And if you have a piece of clip art that's black and white or very bold in color, that works better. A photograph like you would take with your cell phone doesn't work as well. So we're gonna hit apply, close that. And from here, I can, I'm gonna do a couple of, move to another path that I have here, which I already have the football enlarged so, a little bit. So now here you've eliminated the original clip art and we've isolated only the tool path, the trace that you did. Correct. Okay. And because these are what are called vector lines, which are based on a group of points, and you can see all those dots, those dots re me, me, uh, represent nodes in what is called a vector line. And because this is a vector based line, you can take that entire shape, select it, and you can enlarge it or shrink it and change the size and it will retain its uh, resolution. So it's kind of cool that from what I've seen so far, I mean, I've worked with similar stuff on photo software, on drawing software. There's nothing real bizarre happening yet. If, if you've done any work with even something like SketchUp or AutoCAD or TurboCAD, most of the principles apply. Okay. All right, so we've got the vectors that define the football. Now what? And I've also created now a square vector around the outside of the football. At this point, I'm going to add some text. And here I can select have a whole selection of different fonts. Simply type something in. And is there any, are there fonts available on there a person should stay away from because of too much detail, not enough detail, I don't know. That, let, let's say, let's gear this towards somebody who's just getting going on this. Is there any, are there fonts that are easier to work with than others? Well, the software prefers true type fonts. Okay. So it will bring up true type fonts that are on your computer, those are the ones that it prefers. Fonts that are real fine in detail, uh, pen fonts. So in this so start, case- Maybe start blocky. A little bit you're... blocky. So for this uh, lettering, I'm gonna pick one of my favorite fonts, which is called David. And I'm gonna do it bold and centered. I'm gonna pick a height of about 0.75. 
And but you can click, mess with that later. Right? You can mess with it later too. I'm going to click on here, hit apply, and now I have just generally kind of something close to what I want. I can move it over. I can resize it. So are, are you happy, Randy, with what you got there? Well, your name looks a little funny. It does look a little funny. <laughs> <laughs> How would you pronounce that, George? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Try that know. one. Gorge. Go, Gorge. <laughs> There, is that a little better? Yeah, that's what I get for making that joke at the front end. That's right, you had there. it coming. All right, so now that we have all of our vectors selected, we can leave our CAD side, which is on the left side, and we go over on the right side, which is commonly called our CAM side or our tool pathing side. And this is the part that is most unfamiliar to most uh, woodworkers, even computer people, because this is where we're joining the computer to the machine. In this case, we're going to select a type of tool pathing, which is called V-carving. And V-carving is a little unique because it actually uses the tip of the V-bit in the quarters. And I'll show you that in a minute, but I'm going to select all the vectors for this drawing. And I hit calculate. So step one, you picked the type of cutting you're going to do. Correct. Step two, you pick the lines to which you want to apply that style of cutting. Yeah, so there's actually a couple of things I should show you here. When we bring this up, we can actually say, tell it how deep to cut. So in this case, I'm going to cut it one eighth of an inch deep for a flat depth. And then I'm also going to use what's called a flat area clearance bit. In this case, I'm going to select a straight bit for the flat earrings clearance bit. So I actually have two bits, a V bit and an end mill bit that I'm going to use to carve this. I kind of thought this was a two bit operation. Yeah, it was. So when I hit calculate, I now actually have two tool paths. This first one that you see here represents the large area clearance that the end mill will be used for. And if we preview that, this is actually how it's going to do the cutting on the machine. Now, this is pretty cool too because we haven't ruined a board yet. We're, we're really seeing, uh, this is kind of where the, we can start to test the programming that we've done to this point to make sure it's going to define the shape we hope it to define. This simulation is very accurate and I run it for every cut I do and double check to make sure I get the results I want. All right. So now that we've run the large area clearance bit, I'm next going to run the V-bit. And you can see the blue areas here. That shows where the V-bit is going to come up and clean everything up. And as I mentioned earlier, something that's unique about V-carving is it uses the tip of the bit in the corners. So watch as it carves. It's going to come up in the inside of the corners and cut them nice and sharp. And then it goes around the object, finishing off that V carving. And in little areas, such as it's working right now where the larger bit couldn't reach, it's going to use the tip of the bit and clean up that area. And that, I think, too, it's important that you're going to do a tool change in the midst of this. But if you wanted to run everything with a V, you could. It just would take significantly longer because you're taking out tiny, tiny, tiny bits bit. of material per pass rather than. Um, what that quarter inch cutter is going to take out. So draw, tool path, test. And then the last thing we have to do with this one is to inscribe your name. So for this, I'm going to use the same bit. But we have another option here as we were looking at this cutting, the stimulation. You notice how this area is one eighth of an inch deeper than the rest of it. So we can actually, for the text, we could select that and start that at an eighth of an inch deep. Again, I'm going to select my V bit. Hit calculate. And now that blue line represents where the V bit is going to come. Does the, the software text. think you're in the field on the bottom or, or it, even with the original surface? It on thinks the you're. You can see the maybe a little hard to see, but it's actually going to cut it is cutting an eighth into inch the, deep. Okay, beyond the cut we've already cut. Beyond made. the cut we already cut. So that way it's going to cut at the bottom of that flat area. We can see that by previewing it. And here again, this is a good example of the power of V carving 
because it's bringing that tip of the bit up and giving you nice clean serifs on the lettering. So now that that is done, I'm going to save out the file paths. So the first thing I'm saving out is the straight cutting file path. And I'm going to give that a number and a name. Save that. And since the next two file paths use the same router bit, the V cutter, I can save those out together as one tool path. So is that the line in the sand on saving? Is as long as the bit's the same, even if the operations are different, you can save them with yes. each other. Yeah. There's also a setup in here where you can save them all out in one file and it will actually call up and tell you to change the bit. Okay. I usually save them out separately, it just keeps them a little clearer on the subject matter. Okay, so now that those are saved out, we can go to the software that controls the machine and I already have the straight bit loaded up in the machine and zeroed out to the surface of the material. And the bottom corner. In the bottom left hand so corner. So your X, of the Y, and Z is Correct. already zero. Right, so there's three directions to think about. I'm now going to bring up my cutting file. Now, conceivably, you could open the wrong file, right? If, I mean, you've you got to pay attention here. You could run the V bit accidentally with the quarter inch you could. down shear in there. So there's actually an option in here to make sure you've chosen the correct router bit. It's a secondary preview where you bring up and it shows you the cutting path to the extent of your cutting path is what this preview shows. So that just is proof that you have the right uh, path selected. I now have that path already loaded up here. Hit cut again, open and start. And now it's asking us if the correct uh, tool number, which is seven for the straight bit is in the, it is, hit OK, is a Z zero, it is. Now it's asking, reminding me to start the router or the spindle. And the cutting is ready. Okay, so the straight bit is done. Now, I'm going to clean off the surface. Suction! And while we're here looking at the board, I want to point out a couple things. Normally, we've got a dust shroud in place here. And we've intentionally taken that off to increase the visibility so that you could really see the cutting action. And the other thing is the manner in which the board is fastened to the spoil board, to the base here. Randy just used some hot glue on there, which is pretty cool. You can't get more low tech than that. A um, Couple of dabs creating kind of a fillet on each inside corner to secure that in place. So this is cool. It automatically stopped when it knew it was done with the quarter inch bit. And now you're changing to the V? Yep, I'm gonna change to the V bit. Uh, this will cut both the lettering and around the football area. How far does a person have to go in the CNC world to end up with a turret of bits rather than doing these manual changes? I mean, it, that's a number of steps up, right? It's a number of steps up. and. Uh, it's the price of a small machine is to add the automatic tool changer. But that's where after a while you get used to uh, combining your cuts, being efficient, picking the order of your cuts, so you get pretty efficient at that. So now that I have that bit installed, the one other step, and this is one of the questions that always comes up from people who are, are new to it, is how, do you, how does the bit know where the top of the material is? Well, most CNC machines have a Z zeroing plate such as this. 
and I bring the bit over the material and lay this on there, checking that I have a checking that it has uh, contact. And on this set, I add a grounding uh, clip to the arbor to the collet, and then I run a little routine called the Z zero ring routine, and the bit will drop down and touch the plate twice and that will be zeroed out to the surface of the material. The machine then knows how thick the plate is. Yep. And it's going to compensate for that on its depth cuts that you're ready to probably push the go button. On. It is. So George, just like before, I select cut part. I find my next part, which is my O2 file. And everything's in that Actually, one. Actually, I right? need to double check. I'm going to just make double check something here. I've got those two. I'm going to save those out. I always say, when in doubt, find out. And in this case, finding out means resaving the file. Because just to be 100% sure, you're to, about to run the V-bit right. on the V-bit pattern. Because after a while, you get your, you'll get you end up with a lot of different files in your numbering system. Your filing system is really important. And so rather than risk cutting the wrong file, I So a tip here it. might be maybe you need a folder. Yep. That's specific. This is project number 322. Correct. And you put only these files into that folder. That's correct. So again, it's asked me if I have tool number one in the spindle, which is the V-bit. Ask me if the Z is zeroed, which it is. And reminding me to turn on the spindle, which is automatic. Let's clean that off. Well, oddly enough, that looks uh, suspiciously like the clip art you brought in it earlier. Does. A little bit of fuzzing, but that's because we're working with wood, right? It's yep. uh, and a stiff bristle brush usually cleans that right up. Okay, that's good to know. Well, this is cool. This is some great tips that you provided on uh, helping people get programming to talk from their laptop to the CNC and get it to actually produce what they want it to produce. Yeah, and V carving is a great place to start because as you saw, it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, and the options are wide open. And people would like this. Who, who wouldn't love to have a little sign with their name exactly. on it? Exactly. Whatever. Especially right. when it's spelled right. Thank you, sir. That's important. <laughs>